I felt it somewhat necessary to do a follow-up video about the Ariel Gray case and to echo some of the comments that the police have made about this because the police have urged against members of the public making ill-informed comments and by that they mean making comments without knowing the full facts of the case which of course not everybody does. I always say that unless you are there in court on the jury or just in court in general hearing all of the evidence then you don't know all of the evidence and all of the facts of the case. I've heard lots of arguments for and against the conviction uh, both based on the argument whether or not it was a footpath or a shared cycle path and as against whether the gestures made by Ariel Gray should amount to a conviction for manslaughter. But what a lot of people don't realise is that there was actually some light contact between Ariel Gray and uh, the cyclist Celia Ward. Now this she confirmed in a police interview, but we can also see it in at least one clip of the CCTV, which I found on Sky News. Of course, the full CCTV footage has not been released to the public, and I absolutely support that. It absolutely should not be released to the public. It's uh, totally inappropriate for the full CCTV to be released to the public. But I do think that if the public had seen that, then the public may be in a better position to uh, make such comments if they were going to at all. Now, obviously, everyone has an opinion and everyone is entitled to make comments. But the danger with making comments without having seen the full CCTV is that those comments may be based on only a partial picture. I've certainly seen a lot of comments whereby the understanding is that it was merely a gesture at shouting at someone and moving the hand towards that person. Whereas a lot of people making those comments may very well have a different view or come to a different conclusion if they knew or had seen the CCTV where Ariel Gray makes physical contact with Celia Ward. Now, however light or hard that contact was, combined with a gesture of angry shouting and clear gesture to get off the pavement, if there is light contact in conjunction with that, clearly that changes the scope of actually what happened. And so ultimately a jury found that her actions did cause her to fall and then was obviously tragically killed by the car. So whilst I don't have any more CCTV available than the general public does, uh, I am going to show you one tiny little portion of it, which I take from Sky News, which I'll link in the description below. And it does just about show the moment of very light contact. So I'm going to move to that video now, and I'm going to show you that small amount of footage where you can see there is contact with, between her hand and what looks like Celia's shoulder. So this is the moment uh, as she's just gesturing. So there's several gestures here with her left hand. One, two, three. And then this is the moment that Celia comes past. Now you can see at this very moment here that Ariel's hand starts to come up. If you can see on the very edge of that video, starts to come up towards Celia as she's cycling towards her. And then if we go through literally frame by frame, you can see as Celia goes past, you can just about see that Ariel's hand is on what looks like her shoulder or her upper arm. And it's after that point that she tumbles into the road. So you can see here the hand coming up and then it looks like even Ariel's shoulder actions look like they are turning around as though she's trying to almost push her off the pavement to get her off the pavement. So however light or hard that contact was, it ostensibly was enough to cause Celia to tumble, lose her balance into the road. Now, clearly um, the argument is still uh, live as to whether she should have been on the pavement at all, but as we know, the police could not categorically say with whether this was a shared cycleway or just a footpath. As I said in my previous video, I found signs to show that it is a shared footpath and cycle path, although obviously that could have been a lot clearer. And in my view, if it is a cycle path, it should certainly be wider. And I do know from reports that the local authority are looking into that 
and uh, in light of this case we'll certainly uh, I would I would think be making changes to that pathway but I just wanted to make this video because as the police have urged not to make ill-informed comments I've seen lots of comments saying that merely shouting at somebody shouldn't uh, result in a conviction for manslaughter but even in the situation where there was no physical contact if there was an immediate threat of harm or perceived threat of harm by a cyclist and that causes them to swerve lose balance and get injured or killed then the actions cannot be detached because if it's an unlawful act that results in someone's death then it could ultimately end up as manslaughter because an unlawful dangerous act so if someone is doing something very precarious and in this case uh, she was obviously cycling on the edge of the road and even if the, even if there wasn't any contact in my view if the angry gestures were enough to cause an immediate perceived threat of harm that then caused her to tumble even that would be enough in in the case of um, analyzing whether a threat of harm amounts to some kind of assault because of course there does not need to be any physical contact and there does certainly does not need to be any physical harm for something to amount to an assault and even the most basic assault if results in serious harm or death then even a simple assault can ultimately end up being charged as manslaughter. So I wanted to do this video just to clarify those points, to give you another perspective, to give you another way of thinking of it uh, with this CCTV in mind. So as always, if you do leave comments, please leave them respectfully and um, with courtesy to everybody involved in this very tragic case. But in the meantime, I hope you found that useful and I thank you for watching.